Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, we out here at the Triple Threat Media Day uh, for three fighters that turning pro. Uh, represent Flint, Michigan. Uh, can we make some more noise? Now this, this is very big right here. You know, we got three individuals, like we said, that came from the amateur rings, now they turning pro. So this is a big move for the Flints right now. This is a big move for Flintstone in general. Uh, we support our own, so make sure you go out there and check that fight out. February 7th, okay? That's right. Uh, definitely be out there supporting the young brothers that's doing it and making a big stride to greatness. So uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, we're going to get some words live from these brothers here with Sonny Mind. Talk to them a little bit, a little Q&A. Uh, get a better understanding of where they're going to take it. So my name is Dewan Robinson. Triple Threat BD Day is sponsored by Artistic Visions in conjunction with Truly Grand Sports. Truly Grand Sports. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My counterpart. Hello, Truly Grand Sports. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, these guys have worked hard. They put in the, the hard work, the dedication, and now we're a week away from fights. So I feel it would be best to, you know, let these guys explain it themselves. I thank everybody from the city that came out tonight, and on behalf of all sponsors, I'd like to thank everyone from Truly Grand Promotions to Simply Complete to h &R for coming out. I'd like to thank um, Artistic Visions. I'd like to thank Flyganistan. I'd like to thank everybody on behalf for coming out tonight, and I appreciate y'all. So let's get this night going. Yeah. I said, are you ready? Yeah. Let's get ready to uh, send some shout outs. Want to acknowledge and send some shout outs to the people who uh, sponsored, uh, came out, uh, just, just truly behind these brothers uh, in general. Uh, first, Truly Grand Sports. Let me know when you come across the gym. 
So it was just that simple. You just all in. Correct. Okay. I mean, that's that's all it takes. So so does this help you in life in general? Because some say so put it like this: when anybody is doing something in life, it's something that's inspired them to do so. What inspires you? That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Um, have you watched anybody who kind of just uh, just showed you something different that's, you know, that you kind of looked at and you said, like, oh, I could do that too? Or, uh, hey, I like what he does. Or, you know, this is what I want to do. Was that something in your life that kind of led you to this point? Um, the sport is long, it's just, I like to see, I just, uh, I could probably say I like people. Yeah, you know, it's just, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's one, that's one reason. That's why I like doing submissions mostly. Like choking them out, right? Um, now I want to break somebody out. You're going to break it out, huh? Yeah. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Next time I need to throw a submission on somebody, man, I know I need to come see. Yeah. Yeah. Real talk. So, uh, tell me, so how long have you been in this sport? Um, I started a week after my birthday. February 6, 2010. Okay, okay. So, all right, so uh, February 6, 2010. So, yeah, well, four, we had one day's training, and my coach called me and said, I want to fight that Friday. Yeah. Uh, you must have really uh, throw it up. I don't want to the second round because the two of us tired. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, man. I know when it's fight, man. Fifteen seconds feel like it's about five minutes. Oh, we went three minutes. <laughs> that felt about it about an hour. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, see, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Trust me, uh, definitely. So, uh, so you've been fighting. You've been fighting since February sixth, two thousand ten. So I know you have been going. And how many fights? You know, how many fights? And who was your toughest challenge? Let me say that. Yeah. We got, you got a couple of them? Oh yeah, and everybody, everybody's different. Yeah. So like, you can't really just say yay or nay. Oh. I can't because most of my fights I'm um, probably went to the ground. Or, um, or I could probably say Mo Shari was probably my toughest. Okay. But that's the only fight I really had a problem in. Then the guy I fight my pro debut also. Okay. So you, the guy you finished fight. Okay, we'll be the tough one. Okay, and that guy is? His name is Devin Brown. Devin Brown, okay, so everybody be looking for that. This is going to be the toughest fight of Jerome's fight. Oh, no, no, no. Not toughest fight? No. Okay, not toughest <laughs> fight. But, uh, it was one of my toughest fights. It was one of them. <laughs> okay, that's, that's going to be a good look. Then. That's going to be a really good look. You got, uh, yeah, I do want to know what early predictions do you have? How you going to take them out? I like to go into deep waters, so I'll probably end them just when I'm getting tired. Okay, okay, just taking them down? No, I'm actually willing to take the fight wherever it goes. Okay, come <laughs> on. I mean, that's what a good fighter does. His, his coach might tell him to take me down because he's a wrestler. Okay, okay, I understand. So, tell me, how many how many championship bouts have you had in your whole career, amateur career? Mm, over six. Over six? I know different titles and different ways. Okay, and for those in the crowd, tell them what your record is. 22 and 13. 22 and 13. Woo! Right. That is a big drum. Definitely. So, uh, why don't you speak to the crowd? Is there anything that you want to let them know? They support you wholeheartedly, man. They love <laughs> the city of Flint need to see this, though, because um, when you got when you got people stepping out there on the limb, uh, whatever whatever career field they choose to do, uh, we want to support them. So this brother is always this brother's here in your face, and he's telling you where he's going. He's just turned pro, so he got some, he got a lot of good fight to go. Our next fighter, next fighter coming up. Okay, this next fighter coming up, he's known as the Hitman. That's Daryl Hitman Humphrey. He's been practicing and executing mixed martial arts for four years. Growing up in Flint, Michigan, open doors for survival opportunities for Humphrey. After having a brief stint with the law, Humphrey decided to change his life. He's now became an MMA fighter and uh, he started his career under Team Savage. 
and later finished his amateur career with True Fighter, located in Flint, Michigan. Now, as his pro career begins, he starts off with the SFS, fighting out of Brighton, Michigan once again, James Gray. And uh, this guy is ready. After a successful um, amateur career, he's held titles in over four or five different weight classes. So this guy is ready. So I look at it, this guy's dedicated, he's giving us everything, and uh, he'll definitely appreciate you guys' support. So now we'd like to welcome out How you feel, man? I feel good. Feel good? What's going on in your mind right now? Ready. You ready to get what? To the gym. You ready to get to the gym? I always ask that, man, because the man look determined every time I look at him. You know, two pig in his mouth and just uh, biting on that boy head. He's ready to go. He's ready to go to the gym. So definitely, man. So uh, tell us, man, how have you gained in this journey? What led you to this point? <laughs> so instead of going on a war path, you decide to do something constructive. I mean, that's a, uh, that that take a lot. But that's what I said. Um, you know, a lot of people might take a different way out. You know, try to go do something that might uh, eventually hurt them overall. But I see you took a uh, different approach, and that's really uh, that's really uh, a tribute to your character, man. So I commend you for that. Thank you. Make some noise for him for that. So how long have you been in the mix? I've been fighting for about four years. Four years? Okay. And how many amateur bouts have you even had? Uh, I was 20 and 8, so 28. 20 and 8? 28, that's good luck. That's real good luck, man. Real good number. So, so you're training out of, where are you training out of? Right FFS. Now? FSS. Give us a little uh, history about FSS. F SFS. Mm -hmm. Give us a little update on it. Trainer James Gray is um, in the tournament right now for Brazil. Uh, he's a down to the front of fight match. Mm -hmm. That speaks for itself. Okay. So the trainer is uh, going to fight himself. And, uh, definitely got three young studs coming up under him too, huh? That's, that's a good look, man. That's a good look, man. So where do you see yourself taking this? Do you see, you see yourself now? Where do you see yourself taking yourself five, ten years from now? I mean, the sky's the limit. I see myself going far with this sport. You know, really just need support. You really need support. Do you feel that you don't get enough support too? And look at the room. I mean, uh, you know, you got you got strong supporters in the house right now. <laughs> strong support. Right? Ain't that right? <laughs> uh, we gotta make sure that we do go out there and support them, man. We can't say it enough. So everybody who is watching this and who will be watching this, we gonna make sure that they support. Uh, Make sure you put that word out there and continue to tell them exactly where you're going to be at, where it's, uh, where it's time to be at. February 7th, South Bay, Michigan. Crystal Giants, come see us. Okay. February 6th, Crystal Giants, February 7th. Okay, where is that at? Crystal Giants. Where is it at? South Bay, Michigan. South Bay, Michigan, okay. South Bay, Michigan, February 7th, at Crystal Gardens. These brothers will be making a pro debut. So get down there. It's Crystal Gardens and Southgate Mission. We want everybody in Flint to be down there. Buy a t-shirt. Go down there and buy some tickets. Go and take your sons and nephews out there. Come talk to them. Uh, let these mothers know you All right, this them. next fighter coming. Uh, Marjan the Garden Flowers. Flowers began his MMA career four years ago when he became a beneficial team member of Team Savage. He later transitioned into training with Kelly True and True Fighter Team. He ended his amateur career with Michigan Freestyle Fight Team located in Burton, Michigan. Flowers will begin his professional career with Scorpion Fight System located in Brighton, Michigan under Coach James Gray.
He's held titles in the UFL League at 145, TXC, 145 champion, PCFL, 145 champion, AKC, 145 champion, and Michigan Extreme Combat, 155 champion, and Warrior Extreme Combat, 135 champion. Um, I guess there's no more to say. This guy record says it all. So coming up is Mr. John Flowers. I'm feeling good, brother. I'm feeling good. So, where you at mentally? No, as far as mentally, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm always mentally ready. You gotta be. Well, I mean, it all started. I got kicked off my semi pro football team for beating up one of my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I went to go watch my cousin spike down at the Pirani and just end up going, going in there fight. No training, no experience, no nothing. And went all three rounds, won, and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. So from that day, when, what day was this? Uh, it was about four years ago. Four years ago, you just went to the Piranha. No trainer whatsoever. So I just went in there, went three three rounds, and just uh, whooped them out. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I, I, we whooped on each other. Yeah. <laughs> I left out for a month up the heat. Yeah, yeah. What these belts represent? Um, they represents hard work, dedication, determination. And these, these are just, uh, I'm just saying, like, where, they, where are they from? Are they from um, a certain league? Or? They're from multiple leagues. As stated earlier, United Fight, I'm United Fight League 145 pound champion. Total Extreme Combat 145 pound champion. Absolute Combat 145 pound champion. Warrior mm -hmm. Extreme Combat 135 pound champion. PCFL 145 pound champion. And former Big John's 40, 145 pound champion. Just a champion, you know, run. Let's make some noise for these champions. These are real champions. Right Tell us, where you, where you plan to take this now? Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm taking it to the next level. Mm. Um, I plan to go far in this sport. You know, I've, I've always been a natural athlete. You know, I've always played sports growing up through, through middle school and high school. So, like I said, <clears throat> fighting is like second nature. I had to defend myself a lot growing up by being so small. And, Getting picked on and bullied, and I just had to let people know. Is there anything you want to go ahead and let the public know from Marjan Flowers? Um, just anything is possible. You know, if you got dreams, chase them. Don't let nobody tell you you can't achieve what you're trying to achieve in life. Stay positive, keep God first, family second, and, and reach for the sky. Yeah, that's a good word, man. Let's, let, let, let's get around the talk, bro. That's a good word, bro. Marjan Flowers. Make some noise for Marjan Flowers. Daryl Humphrey. Make some noise for Jerome Oxen. Tyler Allen. Let's get it correct. Make some noise for Jerome Allen. Okay, do we got any questions in the crowd? First question, young man. How did my John get kicked out of football again? <laughs> All right. Beating up one of my teammates uh, running his mouth too much. Next question. How y'all feel about the fight that's coming up? What's mm -hmm. feelings? Uh, war. Um, I mean, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for this to be. I'm actually ready to weigh in so I can actually eat what I want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of eating like a rabbit. How <laughs> y'all feel the same way on that one? But, no, I think it's stressful. <laughs> Especially when you got fat kid problems. <laughs> All three of us do. <laughs> but no, uh, this is actually gonna be a very interesting fight for me because this is probably gonna be the first time I'm going there with a lot of my mind. So he, I just better hope, I just hope he came to fight because it can be. My John and Daryl and Jerome train a lot. How do you feel of, like a fourth trainer came? What do you mean? Like a fourth person, a fourth fighter. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't feel no different. I would take them in just like I take these two guys in. 
teach him everything I know and hopefully he'll do the same and teach him everything he know. We all got our strong points and we all got our weak points. And, you know, some of their strong points are my weak points, some of my strong points are their weak points. So we try to help each other get better at our weaknesses. And honestly, this sport is actually a family thing. If you can't be a family with it, yo, it won't go nowhere. Somebody get upset and disappointed and leave, and some people just break easily. Mm -hmm. So, so as you saying, Steve, you want to get up there and be the floor fighter? No. You ain't gonna rock with that. You rocking with it? You want to be the floor fighter? Yeah. Tell him what your name is. Cameron. What's your full name? Cameron Daryl. All right, man. Be looking for Cameron Daryl. Thank you. How long does it take to prepare for a fight? Well, you have, you have certain weight classes. It all depends on what weight class you fight at. And, you know, for myself, I fight at bound weight, which is 135 pounds. So as far as the weight cut, it takes me about a month. But as far as being prepared, I mean, if you always in the gym, you really don't have to get prepared. As I always say, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. I like that. I like that too. I'll be honest. That's what I live by. Anybody else want to take a crack at it? Do the same way? Oh, no, he took the words right out of my mouth. Okay. I'm always in the gym too, and it ain't nothing like blood, sweat, oh. tears. Do you guys have any specific rituals you guys go through before you go into a fight? Any uh, meditation or any type of. Praising anything before a fight, or what kind of music do you like to listen to before you go in? Me, myself, I listen to motivational music a lot of times. I really, you know, I really don't even have to listen to music. I just think about life and my struggles and everything that I've been through. And, you know, that's my motivation and my will and my drive to go in there and knock the next man head off. Well, my ritual is uh, take a, right before I walk in the cage, I give my mom some prayer because she passed away a few years ago. What about you, Daryl? No, no ritual. No. Just going right on in there. I'm always going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all be? <laughs> you can answer that question. Charlie? Um, as far as, you know, like, a lot of vegetables, no red meat, a lot of real lean meat, protein, things high in protein, high in fiber, um, low carbohydrates, a lot of fruit, a lot of water, things like that, you know, just, just, just a, real, a real, real strict diet. Carrots, you like it. Just like rabbits. Real good. What, what, what you got to say, young man? They start out wrestling to get better and better. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good though, right there. You tell them start rapping, and get better, right? All right. You gotta say, young lady. Okay, out of all three of you, who you think is the best person that could win between all three? Why is that always? Yeah, that's tough. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take the hit for y'all now. We ain't gonna take that, man. We support all three of them. We don't want them fighting. We no, 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 back no, 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 Look at Daryl. Daryl like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I can, I can vouch for that because me and Marjani even talked about this. Me and Daryl talked about it. Like Marjani even said previous, we all have our strong point. We all have our weakness. So if you got to go for the strong point, but you can't second guess on the other person, I don't know, strong point or his weakness because it might help him. You never know. True. Yeah, that, that's real. Man. You know, you, you can't, you really can't second guess anybody. You know, whether they're professional or they're amateur. You know, you, uh, you, have, you just know what you need to do. So, uh, it's good. Because honestly, honestly, I've got probably better cardio than both of them. Uh-oh. <laughs> you don't know, you know, let it know, no. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> no, I know that. <laughs> they, they got better cardio than me, though. But I got better cardio. You can, but it's not always good because a lot of times if you go up a weight class, that person is fighting in that upper weight class is usually walking around heavier than what you walk around at. So, so say for instance, if I was fighting at 145, usually you have somebody, you know, 
walking around at like 185, 190, cutting down to 145 pounds. Well, me, myself, I walk around, you know, in the 50s. So if I was to cut 10 pounds, and that person would cut, you know, however many pounds they had to cut, and we go weigh in, and then they rehydrate and eat, they're going to come back nine times out of 10, you know, 10 to 15 pounds heavier than what our mark is. And weight matters a lot in this sport. So, uh, now that y'all are professionals, now, right? Did y'all have the license, y'all hands, etc.? But they don't, they don't, they change that. They don't do that anymore. But, no. I mean, um, I'm pretty sure the courts are still consider us a lethal weapon. Right, right, right. Being that we're professional, unarmed, and professional unarmed. How hard is it to be in the UFC? You have to take baby steps. Um, you know, a lot of times it comes from, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. That right now is, you know, something that's, you know, far down in the near future. Right now, we're just taking baby steps to, you know, get our names out there, get exposure, to let everybody know who we are. Now my question is, now over the years, like I watched boxing and everything, and they um, do you guys, do you guys like aim to end the fight as soon as possible? Or do you try to stretch it out uh, due to ticket sales and, and entertainment purposes, fan base? Because, you know, like with, um, in, in boxing and in, uh, professional fighting, you know, due to the amount of ticket sales and the marketing, they try to, some fighters, you know, like Mayweather, for example, he try to stretch it out just for the fans and, you know, take it to a unanimous decision. Or, or would you prefer to just get it out of the way, move on to the next fight, and get eat on? I believe I can say, you know, a lot of people go this to the end of the fight as quick as they can, but a lot of times that's not what happens. So you have to fight smart, fill your fighter out, you know, capitalize on his mistakes, make them pay for his mistakes, and, and go from there. You know, a lot of times the fight don't go how you want it, so you have to you strategize your game plan and, and, and adjust throughout each round. Well, well, like I said, I like taking my fight to the deep water because I like to test people's cardio. So I say I go all around. If not, um, the opportunity presents itself and I can hit it, then so let it be. You never really know if you're going to be a fighter. Like, anybody can lose a fighter when you get the night. So that's as good as soon as possible. Yeah, I respect that. Uh, I have another question. All right. Now, uh, Well, you can never really say you've been cheated because 
you know, certain people, certain judges, you know, judge every fight and every round differently. So, you know, you can never really say what you, I mean, you know, a lot of times you can go back and, you know, rewatch your fight and be like, oh, well, I did this, I did that. But one judge may not have seen that and the other judge may have seen it and they may have thought different and scored around different in your opponent's favor. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can be misjudged, but you can never really say you've been cheating. No. In closing, we don't cheat, we just win. There's no even no worries about that, but uh, definitely, man, I want to just thank each and every one of you brothers for coming out here. Uh, just Thanks for spending the time, man, and just telling the public. So, uh, I would like to let you guys know, too, tickets are on sale, so you got to spread the word out here, man. You know, on Facebook, whatever y'all want, share this stuff, man. This is our city. These people, they represent y'all, and they represent y'all well.